went to an auction and, in a moment of weakness, bid on and won this restored 1923 Fairbanks Morse three horsepower Z model engine. The guys from the auction house loaded the engine into my pickup. When I got back to the ranch and unloaded it with my tractor, I discovered what a unique machine it was. Z model engines were patented in 1916. This one was built in 1923. It's pretty rare because it uses a buzz box high tension ignition. It's three horsepower and it is a true hit and miss governed engine as opposed to being throttle governed. Some information I found indicated it may have been a cost reduced model since it didn't have an expensive magneto. The spark coil and batteries were located in a factory supplied metal box bolted to the engine as shown here. Also unique about this engine is the total lack of available documentation. I only found one poor quality picture and no instruction books or manuals. I did locate a couple of other fellows on Smokestack who owned one at one time, and they were quite helpful. As the engine had previously been restored, and there was evidence that it was once running, I began with testing the spark coil box. Made by Pontiac, the capacitor had been replaced. Old Shop Dog Sam has a great video on making a rig to test these coils, and here's the circuit I drew from his example. The buzz coil contacts needed a thorough cleaning. I used a relay file, fine emery cloth, and deoxit. Some adjustment is necessary to get the right amount of spark. This is a test of the buzz coil for the hit and miss engine. It wouldn't work with six volts, but here's what happens with 12. Still not, may not be adjusted just right. Here's a schematic I drew of the high tension wiring diagram for the engine using a 12 volt rechargeable battery. The original installation used a Ford spark coil and four one and a half volt dry cells wired in series. The insulated contact mounted on the throttle quadrant is the key to the ignition sequence. We will spend a lot of time on this subject. I connected a multimeter between the contact and the engine block to verify it was working. Watch as the exhaust valve operating rod moves back and forth and the contact in the cup makes contact with ground at or near top dead center of the cycle. This point can be adjusted by adding or reducing shims behind the cup, thereby advancing or retarding the timing. The exhaust valve lashing was later set to about an eighth of an inch. I then wired up the battery box using number 12 wire. Note the neat little cutoff knife switch on the side of the battery box. The following video clips illustrate that the engine did start up, but would not run for any length of time. Pay special attention to the choke on the mixer. Yeah, almost.
The problem was determined to be lack of tension in the spring holding the push rod blocking lever. It was too weak to keep the lever from re-engaging the push rod notch after a hit. I made this diagnosis after removing the entire governor from the engine, giving it a good cleaning and doping out how it worked. I'll let this series of pictures tell the story. Old buddy Wayne Kuby came down and we made some new springs. Here is a new spring attached to the blocking lever. Presto, she fired right up and ran perfectly. Oh yeah, it'll work a lot different. Yeah. It won't stop. Most guys like to see how slow they can make their engines run. We also made a stiffer spring that brought the RPMs up to 500 and would provide enough power under load. I keep the run fast spring in a small bag in the battery box. The following slow motion clips clearly illustrate how the governor functions and why it is called a hit and miss engine. Videos were filmed from the bottom of the engine looking up. As the rotational speed of the fly balls increase, they spread out and draw the actuator pin in away from the blocking lever, tensioned by the spring, causing it to drop into the notch in the end of the exhaust valve operating rod, thereby allowing it to complete the ignition circuit and open the exhaust valve. The proper spring tension pulls the blocking lever out of the way as the fly balls pick up speed from the hit stroke.
Moving the throttle quadrant made only a slight difference in the speed of the engine with the slow spring. When the run fast spring was installed, it made more of a difference. Note, toward the flywheel is slow. I think you'll agree this engine was quite a find and it runs extremely well. I welcome any comments you might have. Thanks for watching.